Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. I'm Chancellor Karen Whitney and today we're going to talk about the many opportunities that are provided at our 14 universities to provide real world experiences. We have a great panel today. We're joined by Dr. Gregory Moyer, Assistant Professor of Biology at Mansfield University, Josh, Josh Grassi, a Senior Fisheries Biology major at Mansfield University, and also the President of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Club, and Dr. Zebulon Davenport, Vice President of Student Affairs at Westchester University. Welcome today to our panel. Thank, thank you, you thank for you. being thank here. You. Well, Dr. Davenport, tell us a little bit about your role in providing real world experiences to students at Westchester University. Thank you. So as the Vice President for Student Affairs at Westchester, one of my major roles or responsibilities is to provide a structure whereby the, the providers of the major programs and services emanating from student affairs have what I call a common set of learning domains and a common set of student learning outcomes so that we are intentional about the learning that happens outside of the classroom. We use, a learning, we use learning domains that are tied directly to the institution's learning outcomes from the Gen Ed program. We also use the National Association for Colleges and Employers to use um, so that when our students learn in those spaces, it's not just happening for them during college, but when they graduate, they're prepared to go into the real world or the workforce. So it's not learning in isolation, it's learning in ways that they can apply it once they leave the university. Absolutely. Yeah. The way I look at it is it's, uh, it is just like a biology lab or a chemistry lab. Mm -hmm. You have the formal classroom where the formal learning happens, and then you have the non-traditional classroom where the formative learning happens. And it's really a symbiotic process, so we have to be intentional in how we integrate learning and development in both places. I see. Hey, Dr. Moyer, talk to us a little bit about the real experiences your students have at Mansfield University. Sure. Um, it really takes on a multifaceted approach in the fisheries program, which I uh, teach. And it starts with pretty much the lab. We try to get the freshmen and juniors into lab rather early. And they have a lot of real world experiences in that lab setting. They have a lot of field based opportunities. And so the lab really tries to get them to do the standard protocols and also the gear that the fisheries biologists in the real world settings use. So it really is a nice transition for the student to get into a job uh, later on in life. Um, also, we have an internship program that happens during the summer. And this internship is a requirement for all our fisheries majors. So again, these students are going out into the real world um, and, and learning from the internships about how to apply various techniques and protocols, again, transitioning them very nicely into their job if they uh, deem appropriate. Finally, we have summer classes. Um, so at Mansfield, we have a culmination of about four years of teaching, right? And they learn and learn and learn. But this last summer, um, between their junior and senior years, they take summer courses where they're really applying what they've learned in the classroom for a full summer. So they're out there um, looking and learning. They're generating hypotheses. And they go about and collect data out in the field and then analyze their data, and then finally, both orally and, and writtenly, communicate their findings. And that's what employers are really looking for. So it's a culmination of that multifaceted approach that I think really makes the students at Mansfield coming out of the fisheries program um, really a, a good asset, and then hopefully get a better employment opportunity. So let me ask Josh, uh, the ex experiences that Dr. Moyer's talking about, can you talk about your own experience? Yeah, um, so honestly, when I first came to Mansfield, um, I didn't know all this was going to happen. I didn't, <laughs> didn't know it was going to be all this field work and all this lab work and stuff like that. Uh, but now that I'm there and I've experienced it all, honestly, I can say that's my favorite part about it. Um, we, I'm in outside almost every, every week. We're doing something different outside. Um, it really breaks up the traditional like learning um, aspects. And I get to apply it all, so whenever I, if someone um, someone needs help doing something, I'm prepared, I know how to help them, I can go anywhere in the country and know that, that I'm ready, and that really helped me uh, learn throughout the last four years. Oh, that's terrific. Well, hey, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but right now we're going to take a quick break and go to Millersville University. My name is Paige Robbins. Uh, I am the student CEO here at Saxby's Millersville. That stands for the Student Cafe Executive Officer. 
Saxby's experimental um, opportunity um, is very unique in the sense that it's more than a co-op or internship. The cafe is a completely student-run cafe. We have a student run the cafe for six months. I started here when we opened and I moved through the ranks here as a team lead, um, starting to manage shifts with my team. Um, and then when it was time to get a new student CEO, I was really interested because I was kind of slowly working my way up and finding that I really liked the leadership position here. The responsibilities for the student CEO are um, really the same responsibilities that someone would have if they were running a, a business or organization. So I was thinking like, I could start. I have currently a 40 team member crew and I do everything from accounting, HR, um, management, team development, sales, scheduling, everything like that. So you learn time management, you learn how to work with different kind of personalities in the same environment and you have that opportunity to change systems and see if it works and if it doesn't work to change it again. So it's a real uh, experience in terms of learning and understanding some of the things that you learn as an entrepreneur. I feel like I can't be scared of anything anymore because I've taken a lot of um, you know, risks, a lot of adventurous steps, and have learned to not be scared of failure. Saxby's is given a grant where the students um, don't have to pay for those 15, 12 to 15 credits. Um, so the students can really focus on what's happening. Um, I think doing an experiential learning um, program like this gives you the full amount of time to focus your energy. Here I can get fully immersed. My day to day is figuring out how to do this well and communicating and fully learning and immersing myself in this and I think that's the quickest way to learn and develop skills and to really analyze what you need to learn going forward. Because this is a truly an entrepreneurial experience where in an internship you're probably responsible for like an aspect of something. The entrepreneur CEO, they're responsible for all of it. I think traditional um, education, you know, we're kind of moving towards a new way of doing things. A lot of students need something outside of the classroom. And I think by getting a little bit away from the classroom and working in fields, they can determine their strengths, their weaknesses, their, their passions. Um, and I think that's what this really brings to our campus. And I'm so glad I came to Millersville because of it. Welcome back. Today we're talking about the opportunities our students have for real world experiences. Josh, let me continue to talk with you. You are very involved in your major in and out of the classroom. And can you tell us a little more about your leadership and your research activities? Yeah, uh, so right now I'm currently the president of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Club. And so just a little bit about the club is we uh, try to go out uh, into the community and really do a lot of uh, interacting with uh, younger and older people, um, just trying to get them involved. So each year we do a, a community service event at the local uh, center where we teach uh, kids how to fish, um, just help them out, get them in the stream, doing different stuff. Um, we go to a local state park and we show kids a little bit about uh, the fisheries um, experience that we have in Mansfield. We take them out, let them do the fun stuff of our, <laughs> of our job. Um, and really get them excited, get them seeing, um, seeing what we get to see every day. Um, so that's really, uh, really something that I, that I enjoy at, at Mansfield. 
Well, that must be pretty exciting for the kids to get to meet real college students. Yeah. So that's terrific. <laughs> hey, Dr. Moyer, why is Mansfield able to offer such enriching activities for students? Sure, there's, there's a couple of reasons why. I think when you look back at Mansfield and the fisheries program, there's a real rich legacy there. It started with Keen Bliss in the 1970s, and he was actually indoctrinated into the American Fishery Society wow. Hall of Fame for aquaculture. So he really spearheaded the program. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Richard Soderberg uh, really grew the program after him. Um, and then I, I come on board. I've been here about three years. I'm a Mansfield graduate in the fisheries program, so I get to, to take the reins and, and steer it in a, in a different direction uh, and unique opportunities. Um, but besides that rich um, legacy, it's, and I have to be honest, it's really the administration support for this program. Um, they've provided a state-of-the-art research vessel for us to get out in the field and do that real-world experience. Um, they've provided a wet lab for us at Mansfield where we can do aquaponics, hydroponics, aquaculture type things, raising fish. Um, and also they've been really supportive of the labs and that's the, the real component of this real world base that works in the fisheries program is we have small classroom sizes, the labs need to be small and the administration really supports that and they allow us to go out in the field. Um, so they're really supportive of that. So it's the legacy, mm -hmm. but also the support of the administration that really makes mm -hmm. Mansfield Fisheries Program work. Well, that's terrific. Let me ask you, Dr. Davenport, talk to us about co-curricular learning and you know, how does it contribute to student success, particularly we've been talking about that this morning. Sure. So as, as, as Josh mentioned, and even earlier as Dr. Moyer mentioned, really it's about providing students with opportunities to learn and develop outside of the classroom, mm -hmm. whether it is using what they've learned in the formal setting in the four walls of the classroom mm -hmm. or using the experiences that we provide for students outside of the classroom, for example, with uh, residence advisors, mm -hmm. referees, uh, building managers, clubs and organizations. A lot of times people think, oh, that's just fun and games. But when you're intentional about the learning, it allows students to really practically apply what it is they're learning in a real world, in time, on time setting. And I think that uh, these kinds of experiences allow students to translate that back into the classroom and then really into the workforce. So it's that powerful deep learning of the classroom learning coupled with the out of classroom real world experience. Learning. Absolutely, and, and in fact, when you're intentional about it, even when it's not directly uh, related to a classroom, in the co-curricular, if you root, root it or ground it in learning, then the learning happens intentionally, whether it's directly applied from a class or in that particular experience. You take, think about critical thinking, you think about conflict resolution, effective communication, interpersonal development, intrapersonal development. These are all the things that allow students to be successful both during college and after they graduate. Well, that's very powerful. It's terrific to see that it's not just what students know, but what they can also do. Absolutely. And that's part of that. Well, thank you so much. Now we're going to take a quick break and go to Kutztown University. Five, four, three, two, one, take Aja two. Since the inception of the cinema, television, and media production department here at Kutztown University, there's always been a really large hands-on component. Um, mostly because of what we teach, but also because giving students the opportunity to learn by doing um, addresses a lot of learning styles and is, makes for much better education. Straight ahead, stay tuned. Okay, you TV Here we go, here we go. All right. And so with situated learning and experiential learning, we provide information and then we step out of the way and have the students do the work that we just taught them how to do and give them the experience of learning by doing. At Kutztown University, uh, of course they prioritize making sure we understand how to use all the equipment properly, but the bigger point they make is that we need to tell a story with the equipment. A lot of times people are capable of using the audio and video equipment that we have here, and they make productions, but if you're not going to tell the actual story of the production, get the audience captivated, then it's not as interesting for them, and that's something that's prioritized here at Kutztown. The facilities here at Kutztown University are, are very comprehensive. We have a studio, we have um, classroom space, we have lots of equipment. We also have a live production unit that we take out for the live event class, um, which gives the students the opportunity to do mobile production work, uh, where they actually are doing live production, so there's no chance for a take two. So they have to really apply what they're learning, they have to prepare ahead of time, and then they're actually doing the work. 
And so um, I think there's probably a certain amount of stress that's inflicted on students there, but we're in a business where stress is part of what you do. And so we want to make sure that we're giving the students as many opportunities to be in an environment that actually is exactly like what they're going to experience so that they can perform to their best of their ability. As part of being an engineer, uh, my job is to help people and I, I like helping people solve problems and whatnot. And what brings me back to Kutztown is I get to come back and, and see students uh, with the skills and interests in engineering and uh, help guide them into that career path. The staff here at Kutztown are really great in knowing what their students' actual interests within the industry are. And uh, Professor Codleys, knowing I had an interest in broadcast engineering, uh, she approached me. Uh, she said, hey, we're about to have Dave Crossan come in. He's going to help us install the six new high-definition cameras. Would you be interested in shadowing him for the day? I was giddy with excitement. I said, yes, please. I'll be there. I'll reschedule anything. And uh, it was an awesome opportunity that I wouldn't have been able to have otherwise. I like to watch the students as they become part of our major and as they grow um, and get more opportunities to do out of the classroom work. And it's nice to see them become young adults who become responsible. And a student last semester said to me, being in your live event class is like learning how to ride a bike. Like you're the parent, we have the training wheels, you're helping us, you're holding us steady. And then you take those wheels off, you give the bike a push and you just let us go and we're able to do it. We know that we can produce that football game. We know that we can produce that concert. And so it's great to see them um, have growth in themselves and understand that they now have the confidence they need to go out and, and get a job in the, in the business. We're excited for them. Welcome back. We've been talking about the many opportunities our universities offer students in real world experiences. Dr. Davenport, let me ask you, can you give us some specific examples of co-curricular learning opportunities at Westchester. Sure, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I talked about residence advisors, I mm -hmm. talked about student referees, I talked about building managers. Another example, um, and, and then I will actually talk about this exciting opportunity that we're going to uh, open up this next fall at Westchester, student athletes. Mm -hmm. These are also opportunities for those individuals to ap practically apply critical thinking skills in the moment. Mm -hmm. But one of the most exciting opportunities that we have that we're going to launch in, at Westchester this fall is our partnership with the Experiential Learning Cafe with Saxby's Coffee. And the unique opportunity with this is we're not only connecting this coffee, this cafe, it's a totally a student-run cafe where students will manage it, they will staff it, they will order supplies, um, they will set schedules for the other students. But what's unique about it is, is that we're going to give the student manager academic credit for the work that they're doing in this cafe. And then on the co-curricular side, we're going to provide students with co-curricular uh, transcript recognition for the work that they do. So when you talk about a real world experience, we're having work opportunities whereby students will get credit academically and from the co-curricular for the work that they're doing. And the community gets great coffee. It's wonderful <laughs> There you go. I like that. That's a win, win, win. Well, Josh, how has your opportunities outside of the classroom helped you become more successful in the classroom? Um, yeah, uh, honestly, I, every day I'm learning something different, uh, learning something new inside the classroom. Um, but it's the outside experiences where I'm really learning. I'm out there actually doing it, um, working in the field, getting getting wet, getting your hands dirty. Um, and so when I come back to the classroom, I'm like, oh, remember when we did that out of the stream last week? That's, that's why we did that, and that's why it makes sense. Um, and I really think you need both sides of that to be a successful student, especially in a major like mine. Um, and, and it's always, it's always ever-changing, and it's always ever-adapting. So that's, that's something that I think is really important that we get to do. I can see that. Thank you. Dr. Mark, can you talk a little bit more about your program's collaborations in your community and across the state? Sure, sure. As, as Josh alluded to earlier, one of the nice things we do for the community is, as the fisheries program, as students, we go out into the community and try to bring some of the 8th, 9th, and 10th graders on board and get them to understand what we do as fisheries biologists. Um, so we take them out into the various lakes with our research vessel, and we actually apply electric current to the water, and that stuns the fish, and they get to um, net the fish and put them in the boat. And that's always a great experience for any student. But the idea is, if we can get one or two of those students excited about fisheries or just coming to Mansfield University, you know, I've done my job, and it's, it's quite rewarding both for the students and myself. Um, another core thing that we do for the community, and it's also a win-win for the students and the community, is we do a lot of farm pond consulting. Um, so a lot of times people in our area will have farm ponds 
where they have too much weedy vegetation or they want larger fish, well, the students will go in and examine their pond, and then from that, they'll write a report, and that's helping the students communicate with the public, um, but also the community benefits from those reports, and we can tell them what to do with the, fa the farm ponds. Um, then finally, I've done a lot, or I'm doing a lot of research with states and, and, um, and nationally as well with the federal government and particularly some um, non-government organizations. But primarily, we're looking at developing new technologies for inventory and monitoring of aquatic ecosystems. And that's what John will be talking about, Josh will be talking about here shortly. Well, I think that that's really important that it, you're contributing to student learning and to the community as well. So thank you very much. Now we're going to take a quick break and go to Bloomsburg University. I'm the instructor for the course, which is called Principal Leadership, Ethics, and Professional Development. While I'm the teacher, uh, the student team, when they're on the mountain, is really responsible for all their own decisions. So we facilitate when necessary, but it's up to the team of students to make all decisions on when they leave, on how many breaks they take, on what they eat and when they eat, on which path to take. We step in if there are urgent situations that require it, but for the most part, um, I'm an observer when I'm on the mountain. So we travel to the mountain over Labor Day weekend. It's a four day experience in total. And one of the major goals that we have initially is to develop cohesion amongst the teammates. They might know each other from the program, some are meeting for the first time. We really want to accelerate that process so that when we get to the mountain, some of the initial discomfort that people have when they get on a team is gone because they've got to make really important decisions. They've got to work together to support each other and sometimes they've got to uh, deal with conflict and they can't do that if they're in the initial stages of team forming. We also accelerate that process by putting them all in a van on the ride to uh, Mount Washington. It's about a 12 hour drive and we found over the last few years when we've done this program that some of the initial team development coupled with that van ride they find out everything about each other and that intimate knowledge of each other's personalities, some of their quirks, their demeanors it really helps them on the mountain because it avoids some of the biases inherent, the misunderstandings that happen when you work with other people. We had some concerns going into the day of the mountain climb because the weather was not looking good. A uh, high chance of rains from uh, Hurricane Harvey. The winds were really high. The day before and previous days, they'd been almost 100 miles an hour up on the summit. What we were worried about was hypothermia. So with rain, and wind, um, temperatures are 20s or below. If you get wet and then can't dry off and can't get warm, you start getting hypothermic and hypothermia is really, really dangerous. We can discuss theories of leadership and read about leadership in a classroom, but it's far more urgent when we do it on the side of a mountain, when we can see leadership and teams emerge in real time, where decisions have important ramifications for the outcomes where we have to adjust on the fly and we have to work together to do so. Once we start a mountain climb there's really not a lot of options other than to go up or turn back and that reality really brings out the best in us and the worst of us and that all happens in the same day and that's where all the learning and insight takes place. This allows us to reflect on what we do that facilitates a team and what inhibits a team and hopefully at the end of this process Everyone learns a little bit about their own leadership capabilities and becomes a better leader. Welcome back. We've been talking about the many real world opportunities our students have at our universities. Hey, Josh, tell me a little bit about your collaboration with the U.S. Geological Survey. Yeah, um, so part of my career at Mansfield, um, it uh, ultimately cultivates in a uh, research project uh, that most seniors do. And so for mine, um, I really wanted to apply a whole bunch of different things that I learned over the last four years. And I wanted to combine both inside in the lab um, experiences and uh, like outside uh, field sampling techniques. And so trying to figure out uh, what I wanted to do, uh, me and Dr. Moore talked about some different ideas and we came up with um, an environmental uh, DNA detection um, project. And so to do that, we needed some help. We didn't have all the stuff um, in Mansfield that we could work with, but uh, luckily about a uh, half hour away is the uh, USGS uh, lab at ASIF. 
and we talked to them and they've been so much on board um, with with helping me uh, allowing me to have access to anything that I could need uh, helping me throughout the process at being there to ask questions um, and they've really been a great help and and part of what I learned at Mansfield um, about everything I've done really uh, applied to everything I did during the uh, the project and it really transitioned over to the real world working in an actual lab actual facility uh, doing everything as if it was our job so that's <laughs> it was really really rewarding to, to do this project oh that sounds very exciting thanks well dr moore how important is it for students like josh to take advantage of the real world opportunities available to them yeah it's it's huge it's, it's it opens up so many doors for the student if they can get those real world experiences um primarily because if you look at the job boards in our profession, they want two to three years experience out of undergraduate. How do you get that two to three years of experience? It's really difficult. Well, it starts with, starts with the labs, and then it culminates into an internship, those internships I talked about earlier. Um, and it's the internships that are really important too, because it opens up the door for collaborations. Um, you'll have recommendation, hopefully, from that person if you, um, you know, need to go apply for a job. Often those collaborations at the internships open up a job itself. Um, so it's, it's really rewarding. And then again, if you decide to go on to graduate school, you have someone else to give you that recommendation. Um, and we've been really fortunate. We've been able to place most of our students, if not all our students, either in um, a job right out of Mansfield University or going on to graduate school. So it's been a really rewarding experience. I think a lot of that is those or are those real world experiences. So the students can do while they're learning. Correct. And that has a exactly. big impact on what they're able to do after they graduate. Exactly. That's terrific. Well, Dr. Davenport, uh, talk to me. How do real world experiences contribute to a student's overall success from your perspective? So it's, it's uh, actually, that's an unfair question, Dr. Whitney, because Dr. Moore here <laughs> answered the question. <laughs> and I'm going to refer back in a moment to, to yeah. what something Josh said in the earlier segment. But really, when you talk about teaching these critical skills, these competencies that individuals need to be prepared when they get into the real world, these experiences outside of the classroom are second to none. Employers want individuals that can come in workforce ready. And when students engage outside of the classroom, and they're intentional about the skills and competencies that they obtain, they will set themselves head and shoulders above other individuals who will come out of college looking for a job. And to quote you earlier, I'll paraphrase, I won't quote it. Uh, Josh <laughs> yeah. said in his earlier segment, he said, if it, he, because of these experiences, he said, I feel like I can go anywhere in the world and be ready to work. And for me, it's about success both during college, but we have to set our students up to be successful after they graduate. And these practical experiences allow them to learn, grow, and develop right on time, in time, uh, in a place where if they make a mistake, it's not detrimental to their future. Well, we're going to end on that because that's so well said. So thank you all today, the panelists, for joining me on this important conversation. Thank you, thank you for watching and learning about how our 14 universities provide real learning experiences for our students. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online 